Yeah, this is uh, Sangiovese, also from the Sierra Foothills. Which is a great district for Sangiovese. It's a great district places. for Italian varietals now. Do you know that the most amount of Barbera planted in the state comes from the Sierra Foothills? Big, you know, for Sangiovese, because you know, you can't expect it to be Chianti with, you know, the birth, you know, the home of Sangiovese. You expect it to be different. But this actually is very Chianti-like. It's got <clears> that <throat> spice component. It's not Ooh. too big. It's not too thick. Yeah, but it's got some beautiful fruit in there. It's really, really bizarre, really different. It's almost got white fruit flavor components, like like peach and nectarine. Mm. Almost a little apricot to go with the cherries. I would say dried apricot for sure. Really it's good in there, but the spicy component, which gives it that Chianti character, I love. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has an earthiness to it as it well. Does. I mean, it's it, but it's all balanced. There's no, nothing comes out and jumps at you and goes, "Hi, look at me, look at me." This you know, is one like, of those wines I taste it. I go, "Okay, I gotta check it out because." I'm gonna sell for twelve ninety nine. You can't buy Chianti, regular Chianti, for twelve ninety nine anymore. And I'm thinking, okay, there's got to be something wrong with it because it's too good for the value. But I kept tasting it, and I'm like, no, nothing wrong. wrong. Nothing wrong with that wine. Twenty two ninety nine on the shelf. Twelve ninety nine reorder is killer price. And I'm doing a ninety seven. I really like it. Ninety six. Mm. But it's just hanging. Around. You know what's funny about that wine? It hangs. It around hangs in there. Around. It's. I can still taste it. Yeah. You know. 